Good evening and welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting of January 6th. Everybody had a great holiday and happy new year. We begin our first meeting in uh, calendar year 2015 and fiscal year 2015 uh, with um, another meeting in the continuing saga of Dover and the Minuteman Vocational School. Um, so I'm going to turn this over to Robin, who is our point person on the Board of Selectmen on this issue. Thank you, Carol. So this evening we have with us um, Dan Matthews, selectman from Needham, Fort Spalding, our representative to Minuteman School Committee and Building Committee, and Ed Bolin, the superintendent of the Minuteman School. And they are here this evening to bring us up to date on the progress that has been made with respect to the Minuteman Building Project, also with respect to um, the adoption of the amended regional agreement to which we as a town deferred at our la la last town meeting um, due to not having sufficient information to make a decision. And, and um, so I'm going to turn it over to Ed, who's going to go through the progress that has been made to date since our town meeting, um, where they stand on the building project, and then um, I will follow up with what we have done as a town. Sure. Um, overall, the uh, 10 of the 16 communities have approved the regional agreement, six have not. Um, there's been continuing discussions with the uh, six communities that are in much as in Dover's case, wanted more information before acting upon the revised regional agreement. <clears throat> there have been no no changes to the regional agreement. There can't be any. And there will not be any, yes. Um, we've since um, worked with a small task force comprised mainly of the six communities that did not approve it and developing a framework for an intermunicipal agreement. Uh, that framework was passed by the Minuteman School Committee um, last month, I believe. Uh, and we've been talking with some folks um, about what they would want to see in an intermissible agreement. Um, so that's been taken care of. I believe that was a question Dover had as well. Um, the building project, which is intimately tied to some of the decisions around the revised regional agreement, is moving forward in the feasibility study. We're in the end of module three. Um, we can go into a greater detail about that if you'd like, but it's moving along in the school committee uh, or the school building committee on February 2nd will be hearing from the design team in regards to the three models that the MSBA requires, the three models and the costs of each of those. In addition, the school building committee formed a task force to look at a fourth option, which was without the MSBA reimbursement, and what it would take to simply repair the building without and what it would take to put the building in shape for the educational program plan that was passed by the school committee um, in the last few months as well. So on February 2nd, we'll have a little bit more detail in regards to the cost of the capital project, which is going to lead nicely into a, our municipal breakfast on February 6th, where we'll be having uh, more detail in regards to the, uh, and we'll be sharing that with finance committee, select boards, and, and such. So that's a kind of a high altitude view of, of the progress that we've made. Um, Ed, just for our benefit, so the so ultimately um, the building project is going to be submitted to the MSBA by Jan July 15th of, of this year, yes. meaning that would you, when would the Emmett, when, when would you get a decision from them with respect to whether Soon the Soon thereafter, we anticipate bringing a project to our 16 member towns in the spring of 2016. So what they're going to do is take the three proposed plans that the MSBA wanted to see, which is new renovation, new slash renovation. From there, we're, they're going to make a decision on which one to go with. Um, we do have input, but they make the final decision. Um, once that is done, then we spend more time going through the schematics and developing the schematics, going through them, 
and putting costs to them. So the costs that come out on February 2nd and are released on February 6th are nearly, just like we did in Dover Sherbin, they're a first draft. And from then, um, the building committee and MSBA and our communities are going to work to bring it where they think it should be. Um, if I remember correctly, uh, the size of the building changed at the end of last year in May. <coughs> Excuse me, Raymond. I'm frogging my throat. Yeah. The, the school, um, the, we heard from our communities that we are not going to entertain out of district. We're not going to build a building for out of district students. We're going to build it only for in district students. 628 is the number that was selected by the school committee at the recommendation of the administration and MSBA has that number. So 628 is what we're going to build the building and design the building to. Right now it's about an 800 person building. We have about 800 <coughs> students in there right now. Uh, but as you probably are aware, roughly 40% of the students are out of district. Right. <coughs> but we're not going to be able to accommodate out of district students. In the Okay. If the um, if out of district students are not accommodated, and the towns that have expressed interest in leaving the region leave the region and do not send children to the school, what is the population of the We're school? We're going to have an inter as we, we, I think you know we're going to have an intermunicipal agreement with the towns that have been in the district, which will save slots for them as long as there is room in the building as long as there's room in the individual program that the student applies to. Yes, yeah, so let's just take this, the census today at the, at the school. If you took out the out-of-region kids and you took out the kids, the students from the current communities that you know are interested in leaving the region, what would your population be? Approximately 450. So it was today, be, yes. 450. <coughs> and those communities that have, are discussing leaving, have very few students. Yes, it's approximately 30, 30 students. Among the five or six. Right. And the IMA would um, supersede the Commonwealth's ability to say, not because you just mentioned that a building would not have out of community students, but an IMA would allow that. Wouldn't the Commonwealth have to uh, approve something like that, or uh, have they already? Um, the department will need to approve all intermunicipal agreements that are. Um, codified between the school committee of, of Minuteman and the school committee of the other community, whatever it is. Uh -huh. They've given us some pretty good guidelines as to what they will approve and what they won't approve. And have they seen this some, uh, Yes. Type C agreement? Yes. Do I have that? Yeah, it's, 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 it's in the package. package. Okay, I have that. Right, package. it's in your package. Right. And, and, oh, God, thank you for it. And, <laughs> And as a town, we have hired counsel who yes. is in the process of reviewing all the documentation. And he is also going to spend some time talking to Minuteman's counsel. And then he will advise us as to whether or not this draft agreement is sufficient for Dover or whether we want to try and amend it in some, in some way. The, the, the intermunicipal agreement, not the regional agreement. Yeah, and this is an approved template. We expect that each agreement would be customized different. to the needs and concerns of each community. Yeah, I mean, just, just looking at it um, the other day, um, the first thing that came to mind was, um, I, I used the analogy of uh, the reservation I made three weeks ago to go skiing, uh, cross-country skiing up in New Hampshire <laughs> over MLK weekend. And I had until today to cancel my reservation. Of course, there's no snow up there right now. So if I don't cancel it and it's no snow, I'm obligated to pay for the weekend, even if I don't go. Or I cancel it and, and trust my luck. And this is, we commit to X number of students. In our case, it would probably be one or two. And if we don't send two, let's say we do two, then we still have to pay for them. So I have a big problem with that. But that's the way that's even drafted. even if you end up filling the spot, so to speak, right? Should not all these student spaces be filled by students from the municipality? And again, in here, the non-member school committee must still pay the per student facility fee for each of these spaces. Yeah, just the facility fee, not a full tuition. Well, yeah. You know, I'm personally I'm torn, and I appreciate all the hard work uh, gone into 
trying to convince 16 member communities to uh, go along with this. But my background is obviously, um, you know, private business. And when someone would bring a contract like this to me, there's a um, high likelihood that I probably wouldn't even read it. Um, because so many uncertainties and so many promises. So we have that threshold personally to get over the promises and maybe the Commonwealth, perhaps, and uh, uh, boilerplate uh, agreements, but then they have to be approved by the uh, um, Commonwealth, the IMA, so to speak. Uh, so that's a problem I'm having with everything right now. I, I, I think the educational aspect of it, the vocational aspect, of it, I think it's needed. And it's great to offer to our uh, children in the town. And I would hate to see that go away because we decided something and all of a sudden there was a little glitch in paperwork. Five years from now, we can't get one or two students in there. So I'm wrestling with those things right now. Well, it's part of the problem of government. Yes. And it's the problem of dealing, you know, government can change, the legislature can change the rules anytime yeah. they, they want. But we don't even know what rules we're uh, um, sort of contemplating because right now. That's life and democratic well, America. Well, again, my background is I sort of black and white. I get to decide things um, where I don't have to. Uh, um, depend on someone's promises or something. So I, the other, I, I have a different perspective because in business, every contract that I enter into has risk, and every risk I you feel is though. Well, and and I and I've been approaching this the same way. I need to identify what the risk is to the town of Dover as best as I can, based upon the information that I have available to me, and then at that point make a decision as to whether or not. I can live with that risk. And I feel as though we're getting closer to the point where it may be easier for us to quantify what that risk could potentially be to the town of Dover. But again, and then make a decision. But the, you know, again, everybody needs to understand these are based upon best assumptions and based upon information that's available to us today. That's an excellent point. Right. But again, but, my hurdles right now. Right, um, no, I, I understand that, and I just wanted to explain to you how I'm getting more comfortable mm -hmm. with the decision that, that we need to make. And if you look at the document that we just gave to you, that gives you both sides, you know, the risks and the non risks. Right. You've got to make your minds up which way you want to go. Well, so, well I yeah, but, but, to, but, to their, but to their points, these are the obvious risks. Okay, there's nothing in here about the financial risk because the financial numbers now are quicksand. If you look at the last page, there is financial information. But, but none of that stuff it's is fine. based upon. Well, the assumptions uh, you know. that, well, we obviously we do not have uh, a lot of information. You're not going to have the building costs until we bring it to the town in a year. This was the handout this evening. For right. So, 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 so let's let's go let's go right. through so, that a little bit. So, back. so basically, let me give you a little bit of background. I, I asked um, the, the Minuteman superintendent to prepare some numbers for us to give us a sense of if there were to be a building project with a reimbursement from the MSBA, what the cost would be to Dover under the current agreement that exists today, and as best as they could to, to take those same costs and give us a side-by-side -side comparison um, under the revised agreement if you were a member or if you were n a non-member, because we're contemplating both of those options. And so perhaps if you want to walk us through the numbers that sure. were prepared. We're all looking at this with the yellow highlights. Yeah, right. Yes. So mm -hmm. what the next Yeah. Um, so uh, one of the, what we did was we took the current agreement and the current fiscal year. That's what you see on the far uh, left. Because there currently is only one student that's driving your assessment for FY15 because on October 1st of 2013, there was only one student. There, today, as of today, there are three students from Dover um, at school. So, um, so that was your assessment for this fiscal year. And the, you can see going down the minimum required contribution that's set by the state. Um, 
the operating assessment share, having only one student in FY15, that accounted for only 0.25% of the total operating assessment. Um, transportation assessment of 0.25%. Um, special ed assessment, that one student um, was on an IEP. And then the, the portion of 1.21% for our debt. Um, and that totals $37,800 for the uh, assessment for the student. So if you continue to move to the right, you'll see there's the revised agreement. So what we did was we looked at what would be the cost to Dover under the revised agreement given the actual enrollment, the actual budget for FY15, and the building project of $125 million with a 40% reimbursement rate from the MSBA. So you can see in that under Minuteman member, it says 1.5 students, because if you took the last four year rolling average, that's what it would be. Uh, the minimum required contribution is the same. The operating assessment goes up slightly. Um, the capital assessment goes up significantly, and this is kind of the, uh, the bear within this revised agreement when you send very small numbers of students. Um, and that totals, um, and the transportation, and that totals $56,000 for uh, one student. So just for the people listening to this conversation, so what's driving the capital assessment is the fact that we have to pay for a minimum of five Correct. students. Yeah. And the introduction of the wealth factor, which is a, a small portion of the revised agreement, but it is. I, that was one of my questions from uh, Mr. Matthews did a summary for us dated uh, December 4th. Thank you for that. And um, can you get me up to speed on the, uh, where was it? I did see the wealth factor in here somehow. Um, Yes. Uh, relative community ability to pay. How's that calculated? It's basically kind of the reverse proportionality to the chapter 70. Remember this? Um, and the logic of it is that in a multi town community, the percentage of state contribution to the building project is actually your lower income and property wealth communities get a higher percentage and vice versa. By being, by being in the mix of 16 community districts that supply in terms of community funding, the presence of, of Dover and some of the other higher end communities actually lowers the percentage of reimbursement that the district gets. So there's, there's a logic to asking those communities to contribute a little more when it comes to paying the bond, which is what this does. Okay. You did mention the um, MSBA 40% reimbursement rate. Correct me if I'm wrong. I thought we, met, we were talking about 70% last year because it was grandfathered in. That no, was we were mentioned. grandfathered in for 40%. Okay. Uh, if, they, if, they if, if for some reason we got out of the mix, it was going to drop down to, I think, 31% is what the Well, what was the 70%? We're just talking about your base. What was the 70% that was mentioned last year? 70%? Absolutely. I don't even recall it. I, I, I believe there were some discussions okay. about maybe going back to the state and seeing since they're trying yeah. to support okay. the I mean, to get a change in legislation on right. that and the legislature had no interest. Okay. Yeah. So I do remember that Senate Senate bill. Bill. That was a Senate bill and, and, and legislature walked away. I mean these numbers show that, that the uh, the impact of member and non-member with the revised agreement, you know, it's 50% cost per student. I mean, it's really a no-brainer for us because if you go up to five students, it's almost the same. So it's, it's yeah. irrelevant, right? If, if your enrollment stays below five. Right. right. If your enrollment were to go above five, um, which it hasn't been above five since uh, 1999. However, there has been more interest in Dover families and eighth grade families this year than we've ever seen. So I, I, I can't predict that right now, but if you look at the far column, we just looked at what if you did have five students? Um, if you were a member, yes. yep. that 27765 includes transportation, special ed, and the capital assessment on a per pupil basis. If you were a non-member and had five students, your per pupil cost would be 26754 but that does not include transportation. So the optics of less than five are very problematic for small communities. Um, 
So the decision that I think you also, the other complication to the decision is, if this is a, a decision that you make to leave the district that you've been in for 31 years, um, and you end up having more than five students coming, then the decision may not, may have created more risk for you than you're anticipating right now. I think this underlying assumption of only having a small number of kids is an assumption that deserves some reflection. Because we're seeing it uh, uh, for a number of reasons, but nationally as well as in Massachusetts, we're seeing a, a resurgence in the interest of career technical education. Um, and just in Dover's case, over the last seven years that we've been tracking, how many eighth grade families come to Minivan and visit, come for a shadow day, come to the open house, it's been two or three. As of today, we've had nine families come. Mm -hmm. That's good, That's good data to know, thank you. You know, if everything worked uh, uh, um, perfectly in this situation, uh, we all uh, hoping the Commonwealth those things and, and uh, the Minuteman Regional School Committee those things, it would be a nice situation for us to sort of ratify this agreement. But nothing's perfect in the world, and, and things change. And, and um, you know, perhaps to Robin's point, uh, we get to uh, X and the y-axis meet and the risk is that and we get to decide. Uh, but uh, this, I think there's some time before we get to that point. The I, other thing I need to mention though that I want to make sure that, and I'm sure you understand this, you, the state requires that every community provide access to vocational technical yes, education. Yes. So if you, if you don't do it through membership in a regional agreement and you don't do it through an intermunicipal agreement, the big question the commissioner will have is, well, how are you going to do it? And we've talked about that, so we're all yeah. familiar with that. Uh, um, and, and we are problem. in conversations with our superintendent about um, trying to project future enrollment mm -hmm. to Minuteman and about being able to satisfy the, the requirement to provide a vocational education to, to Dover students. Maybe. Chapter 74 approved vocational yeah. So the IMA would be between a local school committee and the Minuteman School Committee? Yes. So as the local school committee, and the chair is here this evening, hello Don, uh, have you uh, looked at this at all? I uh, just got to see the problem last week. Okay, we initially thought it was the regional school committee. Okay, so we have another hurdle to get over in the town then. Because if we ratified it and they didn't like the IMA, excuse me, then back to square one? Well, we need to work together. No, I know, I, 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 absolutely, right. but it's another governing body yeah. that has some say in this matter. Yeah. Right. It's fascinating because it's a one through five school committee dealing with a nine through 12 high school. Yeah. <laughs> Only in government. And Only in government. I think what I, I want you to think about is, is if Dover or any community is not ratified this agreement, then we're under the old agreement. If you're under the old agreement, your options are gone. All your options are gone. You're going to be in the district because the only way you can get out of the district is for every community to go to have you do that. And I cannot imagine every community is going to do that for any of our district towns. So by approving the, the, the agreement, there may be a lot of risks, but at least you have options. I mean, I, I mean, not approving right. agreement, you've gotten rid of your options. You're in, you're going to have to pay for the cost. If the building project is defeated, it could be, but there's a not a no cost option. We still have to, are going to have to pay for the repairs and that's why we run those. At, at the five students. Yeah. It's the same, it's the, it's the, the same it's argument you yeah. uh, They will be heard last April yeah. and May. Yeah. Uh, and I get that. I, 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 to but me, I think I think sh that you know putting together a, the f the financial numbers it just helps understand it makes the decision a little bit easier for us. You know? Yeah, I mean to me it's not so much an issue of of approving the amendment um, because I think the numbers show that that we that's the right thing to do, but it's a matter of making sure that that we have the protections we need in the IMA. Right. Which I have some issues with, especially when I hear that you're going to be negotiating IMAs individually with each town. 
subject because to if the I economy. say if I say to you we will do all this but Dover wants to be priority number one of all the non-member towns if we have a kid that wants to go okay and so is you know Carlisle and, and everybody else so the fact that you're negotiating individually with the other towns is We're not right. a good thing to me the kinds of things that are being negotiated are really rather simplistic like the term of the agreement the number of slots that would be held aside on an annual basis um, those are the basic it's not going to be priority of towns that that would be not approved by the department the admissions policy that's been in place and is required is the gateway through which all students who apply must go through and they must meet the qualifications no matter what school community they're from you well, sorry. Sorry. No, Carol, just, just on, on that, I mean, th let's assume that the kids meet the qualifications. I mean, okay. I mean, otherwise, it's totally academic. So, uh, the kids meet the qualifications. Do the non-member towns, do the previous member towns who are now non-members, get priority over a town that has nothing to do with the region? Yes. Ever? If if you sign an IMA, if you sign into right. Yes. Right. Could you walk me through, please? Where is um, that? If we ratified an agreement as it, uh, what it looks like now, there is, um, I know this, it's a, whether it's a four-year clawback, and I don't know if I'm using the correct uh, verbiage here, um, but there's an obligation to pay a share of outstanding capital. And I don't remember the definition of that, if there's a clawback on that. So say we, uh, um, day one we ratify, day two we check the box we want out. What's the outstanding cash? And um, between day one and two, the regional school committee voted to build a $125 million building. Would we be on the hook for that capital? If there's no clawback provision? The, the basic idea is the school has some outstanding capital right now. Mm -hmm. And when you say we're leaving, you're still obligated to help pay that down. But that is a very small amount. For how long? Right, because we were we no, were part because we bonded. Right, so minimal within your budget because you're, no, you're no, going to be no, paying that's, seven thousand. I just wanted to hear the definitions. So the the length of the bond, outstanding bond is Correct. the yes. def okay. Right. Thank you. But um, if you once you say you're leaving, new capital is approved is not your responsibility. Okay, thank you. But um, but just to follow through, in if we if we voted for or were part of the bonding for a $125 million school and we decided to leave after the bonding occurred, we would be on the hook yeah, for that share. Do this, you right. Do this. right. 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 <laughs> so it, it's important to understand yes. that. Thank you, Rob. So, you know, a question, and I probably should have asked this question last year, is the premise that the approval of a new school cannot happen unless this new amended regional agreement is in place? From my point of view, uh, as one of the... And, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm slow. The, the answer is yes. Okay. Uh, and I'd always, if I could just jump back to the point that Jim made at the beginning, this whole process is not user-friendly to the communities. It's dictated by, by state regulation, state department policies made it at other levels. And those problems are compounded by things that are in the existing agreement. What the new agreement is, is it's the best effort to improve those conditions enough to get the support of the, of the communities in the district to bond the new school. Um, it is not perfect, but it does improve a lot of things. And it addresses a lot of grievances of, of community communities over the years. If it doesn't pass, that really puts the whole capital project at hazard because it can't be bonded um, without unanimous approval of all of all of all 16 town meetings. And in Arlington, which actually ends up with about a third of the bill and has some issues that they've gotten some progress on that they see is important in the new agreement, they actually not only have to approve it in the town meeting, but their capital structure and the number of dollars involved. It probably involves a debt exclusion override vote for them. So it's really the idea that the, that the building project can go forward without the new agreement is remote. And that then adds to the, and that's only one community. There are others where the community, say Weston, for example, is voting to approve the new agreement on condition that they're allowed 
I'm not relieved. They're, they've actually voted a notice to uh, withdraw from the district that's affected the day that the agreement goes into effect. So let me answer it a little differently. Um, when the communities realize the amount of work that has to be done in the building in a repair model, and they see that number, without MSBA assistance, without the 40%, and they look at a new building with MSBA assistance, you're going to see it's a no-brainer. So when are we going to have the way to go with the assistance? So I think it's almost a moot question. I think when the towns take a look at the building project and take a look at the amount of work that has to be done, which quite frankly, all that information is on the website right now. So we're not creating anything new. All those reports are in there. Um, we've just put numbers to them or used the numbers in the reports. We're now publicizing it. I think the building project has a very strong probability of passing on either way. If uh, the MSBA did not reimburse, what do those numbers look like? And to paraphrase what you said, you well, can't if you have a hundred million dollar building and MSBA does forty percent, yeah. so no, but you. But, uh, but I will tell you, the repair option is more than sixty million. Okay. And and those because numbers are on the website. About, you know, new Take roofs. Them. We're talking about code requirements. We're talking about elevators. We're talking about all that stuff that has to be done in the building was built in nineteen seventy two. So so the last report I looked at was was done I think five five years ago. Is that are those the numbers so the you're looking at? The only numbers we can work with because okay. we didn't we don't have the money to go and hire engineers to do the building all over again. Did you inflate those numbers at no. all? Okay. So we're using those raw numbers without any inflation to them. Well we we did escalate a little bit. Mm -hmm. no. Not at five or six or seven percent compounded over Right. No, so, so, it's, so, so it's really it's quite frightening. Yeah. Um, and that's why I believe that the um, so those are more than a very strong chance of passing, no matter whether the agreement is passed or not. Now, one of the things, if we voted to get out, there was, I think it was five or six communities could still block it. Is that correct? So right, it has to be unanimous. So um, one, one oh. town has voted against it. The other ones have not. I, I think I no, think Jim's no. talking about well, something different. Amended. He's, yeah, he's yeah. talking about if we go well, ahead and vote amended. for the amended agreement. Um, so one of the risks we have, although it may not be a large risk, but there is a chance that we could vote for this new agreement, and then we could not be allowed to leave the district. Because well, that gets into the needle letter. So right, but that is just intent. Yes. So Dan, what did, that's why I say it's remote, the, but... You know, the, the, yeah, there's a provision in there that says it happens that the meeting affirmatively spoke to Brock and Brock to withdraw the town meeting called with a certain window. That that would prevent you leaving. Um, the, what, the Needham Board and then others working on the on the lines of adult have adopted resolutions to say we will not put that into our warrant. So any town during the first year after the new agreement goes into effect. And that's also the period during which from the agreement to when the bonding votes take place. Anybody that wants to leave, you won't put it into the warrant unless it goes in by citizens. I remember that letter nine, last year. Right. Nine of the towns have adopted that. So as long as those selectmen hold to that petition, that, that door is... is well, let me ask you a question. You, you sign an amendment to an agreement, and then your town warrant can supersede the language in that agreement by the by. The, you know what I mean? Follow you me mean on this issue. Yes, on this well, issue. The way, the way that the town, if the town votes to withdraw, yes. they notify the school committee. The but school subject to not the provision of the other half of the crowd not allowing you to leave. Yeah. Well, they issue the notice. They issue the notice to the school committee. The school committee notifies the town. The towns then have a certain window and in which they can have call town meetings and vote to block that. Right. Right. However, yes. if a town meeting doesn't have a town meeting, it counts as an assent. So oh, okay. So you manage it that way. Thank you. Thank you. And it has to be at least half. So by saying, by nine boards of select and saying, 
We're not putting it in the warrant. That's the best. Okay, that's how you manage it. Okay. Yeah, by having 90, 90 day window, by having so 90 days, it means special, special, special town, town meeting. Right, right. For okay, so yeah, well, I'm on definition, yeah. guys. So that helps me. Yeah. 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 Yes. Thank you. Well, we have a lot to uh, go through. And again, thank you for this. Do you have any other questions? Not right now. Um, I don't want to go on this. Um, so we looked at this as an informational meeting. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I talked to the Warren Committee. Um, we'd be happy to come out again. But I think now you need to think about it. Yeah, I haven't thought about it. Yeah, we'll come back. Mm -hmm. We're already here. But, uh, you know, I do appreciate this informational meeting. I know, Dave, how much time you put into it. For it, obviously, Doctor, thank you very much for coming out. Um, but we haven't looked, focused on this in nine months. Robin, obviously, Robin has. <laughs> um, so we have to jump back into. She this. likes to have breakfast with us. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> so, so just right. So, well, I learn a lot. So just from the town of Dover perspective, what our next steps are. So I am committed to going to the Dover School Committee meeting. Um, I believe it's January 23rd. Do I have that right? I can't remember the date. Don said you were right, right. It's on my calendar though. And um, in the meantime, I am working with our council on reviewing both the intermunicipal agreement. I'm making sure that I understand and that we as a town understand um, the the amended regional agreement and I am in the process of, of as I said I believe there is a no no risk solution so I'm in the process of trying to quantify what I you know as best as I can with the help of our attorney what those risks you know what the financial risk is to the town of and you're Dover. You're going to have our numbers on, the, on February six. Right. All those initial numbers are not final. Numbers. No, I, I know that, numbers. and and I you know I'm a numbers person. I understand things are based upon assumptions. I I really do appreciate getting this. It's very it's very helpful, very helpful. to us. If your council needs any additional information, please call me because okay. I'm sure. You, he or she would want to look at the uh, the admissions policy, right. which is referenced in the IMA, okay. and answers um, Carol's question about priority because we are differentiating applications based upon where they come from, and we're we've received uh, the okay to do that. Okay. Well, not to prolong the uh, issue any further than to obviously keep you guys home. The State Education Commission. Obviously, would have to, and you guys would have to rely on them. Six, the 15 other communities would have to rely on them heavily for all this to happen. How far advanced are they, and how solidified are they uh, in supporting this new? They, we've kept them in the in the loop from day one. Uh, they are completely have approved the uh, IMA framework. Um, they've made it very clear to us what they're looking for from a community that wants to exit. Um, they're they've also made it clear that they want the educators in each community, our district and your community, to be talking about this. Um, they don't want it to be over-politicized. Um, and we believe that we have their support in any reasonable intermunicipal agreement that we put in front of them. They're they well, well aware of the Minuteman issue. Um, and have been very supportive, as a matter of fact, the Associate Commissioner um, came with me to the Boxborough Select Board meeting to explain some of the same questions that you have. So they're committed to helping Minuteman move forward in this, and they recognize the complexity of a 16 regional, 16 town regional district, but they also understand what it offers kids. So they're, they're we feel committed even with the change in, uh, in the governor uh, this week. Um, he's spoken several times about the value of vocational technical education. As a matter of fact, on this transition committee for education, there are two vocational superintendents and only one academic superintendent. Um, so we believe that we've got a, a great path forward to making this work for everyone. And I think we're going to have as much, if not more, support in the uh, administration that's coming on board this week. Thank you for that. Mr. Rapetti, do you Just have a question? I have one quick question about the chart. Uh, for this right-hand column, 
Uh, there's a number down at the bottom of the column, 2250, with a footnote 3 next to it. I was just wondering, could you tell me what the 2250 number is? That represents um, a special ed assessment that's going to be charged to non-member communities going forward. We currently charge $5,000 per pupil for a student who's on an IEP. Um, so that, that assumes that half of the students of those five are on an IEP. Right. Uh, but that last column does not include transportation right. Right. after the end. Right. Right. That sort of tracks what we have been. Yeah. That's a 10 year average. Well, I know, I know that we've, we've all had conversations with Steve Bliss, mm -hmm. and I know that he has met with his, his uh, guidance office and so forth, so that's been very helpful. Right. And they've been the very helpful. Yeah. We've met with them and, and, their, and their principal and, and spent quite a time. And it's interesting that both Steve and their uh, high school principal come from this back, from the very technical background. Yeah. So um, they've been very, very supportive. Well, as we've, as we've said all along here over the years that, you, that you've come in, that there, there's no question about the value of the education that's provided. The issue really is, given the over situation and the number of students we have, and, and the future plans for the school, what is the best for us to do? It's got nothing to do with, you know, evaluating the, the education, because it's a fantastic education. In my opinion, it's very clear what Dover should do, and I've always felt that way. But I will always say that it's important that Dover students have the opportunity to have a career in technical education. Right. I think that's extremely valuable. And I think it's important for the state and the federal government to, instead of just giving lip service, to really... Oh, absolutely. And it's one of the things our attorney is looking at is, is the requirements of, I think it's Chapter 74, right? Right. To make sure that as we maneuver all this, that we're meeting that obligation legally as well as morally. And I'd be happy to share a letter that I've sent to the new governor, Robin Messina, uh, just my recommendations, and, and they're pretty simple, but I know that uh, Superintendent Association are, are very interested in one of those. So Ford may be the next commissioner of education for Massachusetts. <laughs> no, I, I just feel strongly for this kind of education, but in terms of Dover and this decision, I would have no trouble. Ford will have to get a new business card as a private consultant <laughs> to the Minuteman region if Dover walks away from this. Uh, well, if Dover walks away, then I'll find a new job. But, uh, I'll manage both Dan and Ford. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you look at the uh, yeah. candidate who lost for mayor in, in, uh, in uh, Boston, and he is. That's right. And he's he's, he's available right. as well. Right now. So, yeah, so yeah. these are great stuff. That's right. Yep. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes. Thank, thank you for all the work. You. Thank you we'll very be in much. Touch. I, I would just say what I just would say one thing, and I think the timeline works out that way. That we don't want to get into the situation that we got into last year, where we we're making some decisions very close to town meeting. We have a open hearing scheduled. I think it's like the second week of March or something. Yeah. Sounds like with the numbers in early February and everything else that I think that I think we, we should be interested. We really want to have everything in we place so that we can do it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Thank and you. If, you, if you want us to come, be happy. Great. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Dan. Okay. Second item on the agenda is reviewing um, on the preliminary basis uh, what we're looking at for the um, warrants for the annual town meeting. So that's in our package. So one through nine are our, our, our standard uh, warrants every year. Uh, Ten is new. Subdivision, drainage, easement, and road. Is this a, an acceptance of one of the developments? Potentially, yes. This is a very preliminary list. Essentially, sure, it's a Sure, of course, and I appreciate list. it. Yep, yep. So, so 10 and 11 will, will both be, right, acceptance of? They're, they're separate questions, yes, separate developments, yep. and, and both very, very tentative. Um, I, okay. As far as the public way issue, I thought we were going to study all the, there's probably a list of 15 private um, um, roadways right now. And if I recall, it was last year or the year before, we talked about doing it all at once. 
I'd have to look into that, Mr. Dodd. I, I can't recall the details of that. Again, this is this is a tickler list of stuff that's right, okay. come but, up uh, over time. So. I do recall that, yeah. though. Then we have the uh, continued funding of the Conservation Trust Fund, uh, which we re-implemented last year and has mm -hmm. been in good, used in good stead. Then the Dover Suburban Regional uh, Capital Requirements, depending on how we go with that. So pursuant to the IMA? Yep. Thank you. And these are their preliminary numbers? 14 okay. Well, the 358, I think, is pretty firm. Yeah. So the numbers are, okay. the numbers are firm. I think the question is whether how we do we do the IMA or, or right. not. Right. And of course, we have Minuteman, which you just talked about. Placeholder on the planning board. Some amendment to Mass General Law for Fire Department. Not the regional committee thing. So we have. Um, what is we have a few here that, that we don't know anything about yet. Correct. So the so so just a question: Do we need two placeholders for Minuteman? Do we need to have a separate placeholder for whether or not we're going to accept the um, regional agreement, and then another one to decide what whether or not we're going to opt out of the agreement? Oh, you know, that's a good point. point. Western it is one, right? Right. So I think I think it's yeah. worth discussion mm -hmm. as to how to best best to handle that. Absolutely. Carol, you jumped over the council on aging. Oh, I'm um, sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, I forced it. No, 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 no. So briefly, there um, that's a 12 member committee right now, and um, unfortunately, because of the lack of um, involvement. Um, the current board wants to go from 12 to 7 or in plus 2 associate members. So that's what they're, is that correct, Greg? That's well, correct, not 12 to 7. Members. Plus 2 associate members. So that's what that um, special warrant article is about. Well, 12 is certainly the largest committee we have in town. Yeah, and they haven't told it in the number of years. No idea on the planning board placeholder? None. Is a single generic sentence. We request a placeholder. Okay. Okay. The warrant closes the, the 20th? A week from Friday, which is 16th. The 16th. 16th. The um, acceptance of donation of real property placeholder. <coughs> what is that one? Uh, an individual has expressed some tentative interest in donating some land to the town, a modest amount of land to the town. So we couldn't do that in a regular meeting. That has to be a special town warrant. If it's done, as, if it's accepted a certain way, yes. Okay. Uh, again, <laughs> legal, legal. No, you, you handle the legal stuff. Or you just tell me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's fine. That's fine. So we haven't had so. So we really haven't had any, uh, this year is not one where we're going to find anything really other than maybe this real property placeholder, anything from citizens of Dover. Nothing. Nothing no. to date. <laughs> no, no, we haven't heard any uh, expressions of interest in citizens' petitions. Okay. Uh, James, the um, Warren Committee and the Reserve Fund amount, um, is that on your agenda soon? Do you anticipate that moving around? Uh, we haven't discussed it yet. And every year there is discussion about right. whether that's an asset or not an out. Um, this year, um, we'll, we'll probably bring it up at our meeting, um, but uh, there's no discussion about increasing that. Okay. Certainly not decreasing it. Right, right. What happened in fiscal year 14 with, with the reserve fund? It did. Um, we have never had an issue where it's been completely extended. I don't remember the exact amount. But it, we have um, money left. Use, in some years we've had to use most of it. But, uh, the last time we had a pro not a, um, sort of deep into it was the replacement of the oil, oil tanks. Tank. That was a big hit. Other than that, we haven't really closed in the last few years. You, know, you don't really get it. You get it on those big emergency issues, not on yeah. the normal budget type yeah. things that come up. Right. Yeah. But it is something we've talked about because as the budgets get tighter and closer, yeah. um, there's likely that Need to tap more and more deeply. Okay. But uh, we haven't discussed it yet. Thanks. 
Okay. Any further I don't, questions? I have no this? further questions. Thank you for will, this. Will you follow up on Middleman? Okay, yeah. thanks. Might be nice to get from Weston, but they actually the verbiage that they we we got it from them last year. Oh, okay. um, let me look through my folders. I remember. That's right. My Minuteman folder is now larger than my Springdale Ave folder, <laughs> <laughs> which says a lot. <laughs> I bet mine's bigger than yours. Yeah. That's the true. The difference between 120 days and five years. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Huh. Anything else on, on this? No, nope. thank okay. you. Okay, review, revised, fiscal year 16, Selectman's capital budget requests. So we have a new... So, well, Mr. Ramsey. In your packet, Madam Chair, you have the current voted capital budget request of the selectmen, and based on some revised budget numbers provided by the architect, we are recommending that the 530 for item number one, the facilities upgrade, be amended to 550. 550. And that's based on the new uh, cost uh, detail that was presented to the Capital Budget Committee this morning. Yes, that's on a, um, not a phase in project, but a one-time project. A one-time one time phase one and two. Okay. Is that the only change, Dave? Yes. Thank you. So it's at uh, 20,000 to the bottom line. Yeah. Any Good questions? Any further on. questions about that? No. no. So I make a motion we approve an increase of line number one on the Selectman's capital budget from 530 to 550. Thousand. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Great. And the other things we have relative to budget in our revised. 9-11, which is Norfolk County. So we received their numbers or? We received their assessment. 10% increase. Yes. Hmm. So it was 10, okay. The guesstimate was eight to 10. So. And last year I think it was eight plus percent. This year it's 10 plus percent. And just to, to refresh your memories, they did an actuarial evaluation last year, which picked up some of the horrible stock market losses from 2008 for the first time based on their method. And they're finding out that retirees are living longer, so that also adds to the liability. Surprise, surprise. So they made the decision last year to increase overall assessment 10% a year, and then our share of that assessment changes based on our payroll. So last year was less than 10, this year was a little more than 10. Okay. So they can catch up. So how many years will it be before they can take into account the stock market increases <coughs> in 2014? <laughs> <laughs> Several. <laughs> and by then they might be wiped out. Yeah. It's an average. Okay, so I make a motion that we approve uh, budget uh, department number 911, Norfolk County retirement expenses for a total of 1,023,985. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great, thank you. So that means we have um, just one left, Minuteman Vocational, is that correct? Yes. And did I hear we have three students to contemplate? Did he mention three students tonight? Three he students did. currently he did. there. He did yeah, mention I, I'm, I'm a little confused by the numbers I got from our superintendent, so I'm going to go back. I, I meant to ask that clarifying question. I, I, yeah, right. He definitely said three, though. And I certainly wasn't aware of the number of students who had gone to look at the school, so I will. I guess the big question also is Steve aware of that. <laughs> right, so that's what, so, right, parents, right, right, so that's what I'm going to find yeah. out. You know, again, there's no, yeah. you don't know what the yield is based upon oh, the right. visits, I mean, so. Parents doing their due diligence will take right. a look at everything. Right. Okay, and then we have a spreadsheet showing the totals. Um, oh, without the one we just no, approved. Yeah, I just looked at that. Yeah. 
That's too bad. So if we add the one in that we just approved. It's about 10 million, maybe 11 million. A little shy of 11 million. 11 million plus one out of three students at Miniman. So it's either 11 so million, up. 250 or 11 we're million. Up. I was just like the last number that were, our budgets were down by 5%, but no. 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 So we'll be up somewhere around by the time we could get Minuteman in there and all. Right. Somewhere between five to seven hundred thousand dollars probably. Oh, that's, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's, what's driving it is health care. You know, a, a lot of what's driving it is non, non-controllable expenses. Right. Concom's driving it. <laughs> it is. We should cut that down. I'm going to beat that to death. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe we'll get a savings on snow and ice. Yeah. Hey, knock on wood. Yep. No, I was supposed to be going cross country skiing and all came weekend. Uh, okay, cancel and pay the retail rate in February. If you cancel, <laughs> they'll get a big snowstorm. Of you course. know that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Good, thank you for this. This is okay, a summary school. Yep. So we went hiking instead of cross country skiing. <laughs> okay. The draft town in port, um, it's in the packet. We also received an email. Uh, from here, yes. With it, um, I have some. I started to work on it. Um, sure. And I think the best thing to do is for us to individually take a look at it and get our changes yeah. into Greer. Okay. Um, one of the things that uh, I should mention under the um, Springdale property discussion. Um, I, 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 I would like to suggest that we add a sort of last paragraph to that section uh, that talks about the, the need to sit back and take a look at the impact of what we've seen in the last two years of having to be bombarded, basically, with property to buy. And we can't continue to do these kind of purchases. And we know that they're going to accelerate the Open Space Committee on the Open Space Plan with all the properties that are uh, large and that will be uh, being sold. Doesn't list necessarily all the smaller Chapter 61 properties that also come before us. Mm -hmm. And we don't have any, plus we have the, the short time frame where you have to make a decision which just mitigates the problem, which just exacerbates the problem. And we don't, we don't have, we chose years ago not to join the uh, Community Preservation Act. We've lost millions of dollars from that that we could be using for this kind of stuff. We have to look at the hydrological issues of development, which we, we talked about during the Springdale process. We have to look, I think, at, at some zoning and planning board possibilities. Right now, the only possibility for a landowner to sell their property for maximum value is either a 40B or an individual home and nothing in between, which is very old-fashioned. So I think you know a lot of it questions got raised and issues got raised um, that require some some thoughtful um, analysis over the next year or two, and I'd like to get something about that into the town report. That's so, an excellent point. So you're going to drink um, it? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, sounds good. Yep, yep. I will add my critique of um, adding planning board to a couple of things, so forth. When did we si sign the IMA? Um, was it in the previous calendar year? Because we're at the town meeting last year with it for the first time. So I was wondering when I we signed it. I believe it was February. That we signed it? Well, we worked on that for three years. I think it was and even I longer, because I was on the school longer. committee. We were talking about it longer, right. sure. Yes. Yep. Uh, you know, that's an important step that we took with the town of Sherburne. Yeah. And I'd probably like to see that in there somehow. Okay. It's your yeah, report. The regional campus tremendously. Um, another thing is, do we want to mention the water study that uh, we're going to do? That's with the well, that's the right thing I was thinking. Good, thank you. Okay, okay, good. 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 Hydrological uh, situation. Yeah, I have other small. Uh, when do we sign the highway contract, the union contract? I just didn't have time to look it I up. I think today. two years ago. Was it that long ago? It was in the 13th report. 
Okay, thanks. I, I didn't have time to look at my dates. I know I sat there. It seemed yeah. like yesterday I sat yeah. there. Uh, yes, but that, that begs it what exactly right. about the regional law contract. Right, because that has really helped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, include the planning board and the Springdale lab, uh, study. We talked about all the other uh, boards. Planning board seems to be uh, Yeah, they were, and this, I noticed that. Okay, thanks. Yeah. But we'll, we'll, we'll yeah, yeah, all the small stuff we'll, we'll do later. Yeah. But the IMA, I think, is important. Uh, Carol, you touched on the water study. Great. Thanks for that, Greer. The highway is already in there somewhere. Okay. Previous. Good. Other than that, this is a lot of work also. Yep. And um, this is a great, great 99% uh, product. This is, well, I know I'd it like takes to, a lot of work. If I may, Madam Chair, I'd like to commend Greer on a Herculean effort to get this thing done well, uh, for this meeting. I, I didn't expect that it would be done. and. Yeah, this a great is a job in a short work. period of time. So thank what, you. What does it do to the uh, town report to me? It's due at the end of the week, but um, this week. there was a little flexibility. Right, okay. Sure. So our goal should be to finalize it and approve it at our next meeting. Yes. So we'll get okay. this up to you mm -hmm. shortly. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for this. You're reliant on the law firms to get you um, summaries of what's going on also? Um, I gone this afternoon and I was just checking on the salt okay. marsh trust. Good. So yes, yeah, so okay. No, there's a lot of meat in this, as they say. You did a nice job. It was a busy year. It was. What I do, I go through every single um, meeting mm -hmm. agenda. Yeah, me too. Yeah. It uh, was really hard to condense, but there was right. a lot of it too yeah. this year, so yeah. Yep. Okay, thank you. Next item, the administrative assistant to the police chief job description. Who's handling this? Career. Uh, the um, long time administrative assistant in the police department um, is retiring this month. She uh, recently announced that. And um, in anticipation of filling that position, we always look at. Um, changes in staff as an opportunity to see if we are um, uh, we're staffing the offices properly, changes in operations, the way we might configure positions that would be more optimal or keep them the same. This job description, uh, although it has some very minor revisions from the police chief, um, just to provide more clarity, was prepared in uh, 2004 at the paid class study and uh, has not been revised and there is um, some talk I understand of uh, potentially expanding the duties to um, include uh, flexibility to perhaps staff other offices on an as needed basis. We've had this, this experiment with the building department which did not work uh, because that if the administrative assistant who was helping in that department found that she was overtaxed and we have supported a number of offices in recent years because of the uh, lack of depth of staff. When we're down a person, it really hurts and typically it's someone from the selectman's operation who goes and, and staffs that and, and that results in additional work load on the people who are in that office, who are left in the office, particularly the selectman's office, um, the IT um, administrator, town administrator, whoever's, whoever's available. Um, recently we had a, a shortage in staffing and accounting and we really had to reach out for that. So this would allow us the ability to comfortably um, accommodate all of the offices without um, being short-staffed, it seems, on an ongoing basis, given what the, is the, the current, small staff. Yep, what is the current man hours for this um, job? It's 22, and it would remain 22 okay. in the police chief's office. Do you feel comfortable with that, um, staying the same, and then using some additional hours what are the other budgets to offices? Aside from um, the uh, thought of uh, using your assets, so to speak, and it's an employee <laughs> to me, um, 
fundamentally across the board. There is a um, issue of uh, physical location, though, which this person be primarily over the Protective Service Agency That's building. That's correct. They would be. There would be a regular schedule. It would be 9 to 5 and designated hours working for the police chief. And, and the police chief would be the primary supervisor. Um, and then, you know, if the person, we would look at the other needs in the operation and use some, something of a floater perhaps um, do some of the administrative work in the building department that is now on the financial staff, which is additional burden for them. Just some uh, shifting around accounts payable, payroll, since the person is already um, doing those things in the police department, it's, you know, it's something that they would already be trained and they could take um, some of those responsibilities from the other offices, the basic recurring weekly yeah. duties. Just generally speaking, when, when somebody is just doing one particular job, there's mm -hmm. a set of qualifications and experience that, that would be acceptable. Mm -hmm. When you start talking about uh, floating, even though there's some foundational commonality to the mm -hmm. type of stuff they might be doing, mm -hmm. um, you might be looking for somebody that's got a little bit more experience to be able to handle that kind of change. I mean, I find the, the minimum requirements here incredibly minimal. Mm -hmm. I mean, high school education and two years experience, that's really minimal. Yeah, we, I, I, I don't I know. I think essentially we're looking for somebody who could um, do primarily bookkeeping types of um, tasks, payables, payroll, turnovers. Um, no, but might, that might be fine if the job is only police. But if you have them doing others, I, I don't know, two years, two years experience to me in an office is not a lot of experience. So well, this I, is a draft. Just to think about. This is a draft. Just to think about. I just, you know, we're asking, you know, to explore this with the yeah. personnel consultant that was used in 2004, yep. who is familiar with Dover and knows what the various jobs entail. Yep. I, mean, I, yeah. Yeah. I would be interested to get his opinion on whether we did a high school diploma and four years of experience that, that would still within, fit within the, um, the job classification. Mm -hmm. That's why we follow this process of a draft that goes okay. to him. That's right. And, and okay. it's, it's, it's as likely that some of this is historical yeah. and, and yeah. it would be a refresher. Yeah, uh, equivalents, and so if somebody really had more experience, we would weight them more heavily. Absolutely, I mean, these are just the, the minimums. Yeah, but if, if you, if I understand that, mm -hmm. but if you, if you come to a decision that that uh, you really need somebody with four, all, all keeping it minimal is that you get a lot of applications that you have to spend the time going through that aren't qualified. Mm -hmm. So. If you raise the qualifications yeah, a little bit, so, right? Yeah. yeah. So just something to think about. Appreciate that. Administrative yeah. assistant, but yeah, they're pretty quick to do that. Right, but somebody has to spend the time to do it, so why bother? Right. Right. That's that's my point. So just something to think about. What was your comments on the chiefs? Um, did he add anything to this, or what's he did. his thought? It was just you know being a little more specific. Okay. Yeah. So he did. What did he think about the two years? Does he have anything uh, to say about that? any weight in the discussion? Certainly, he will provide further input when the draft comes back from the personnel consultant. This was a first draft. Okay. And, and again, yeah. the, the essence of this is creating a full-time job without increasing resources, but pulling them from three different departments and creating a common job under the direction of the police chief so that we be able to institutionalize some of the things we tried to do in the past. And what we found with smaller communities recently is I have seen postings where the position is primarily housed with one department, but there is that uh, um, option for the person to be a floater. So it really, in a way, makes a lot of sense. Rather than staffing all these little part-time offices, you can have somebody. Um, the Conservation Commission the Administrative Assistant um, in the municipality she worked in previously, she um, did work for all three land use offices. Wouldn't that be nice? I mean, I'm just giving that as an example of efficiencies. Yeah. Yep. No, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. But that brings up the question of uh, minimum 
uh, requirements for certain. Mm -hmm. So CONCOM might have a different minimum requirement than the police do versus payroll and accounting. So shouldn't we sort of get to a level of the that's highest requirement? What, that's what our consultant will do. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. So we'll see this again after it's gone through that mm -hmm. process? You certainly may. Okay. I don't want to beat a dead horse on that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Bear. Uh, other business. Maya nominations and voting delegates. Oh, this is for the Maya annual meeting on January 24th. Yes. Um, you know, in the past... We haven't had anybody attending. And we... I don't think we've voted it, if you can correct me if my memory uh, doesn't serve me, but because I do not know any of these members, right. I've always been hesitant to uh, vote. Mm -hmm. Paul Collins is in there. He's former lieutenant administrator in Delaware. Oh. <laughs> Where is he? He's now oh. lieutenant manager in Delaware. Oh, I've Get on the property uh, casualty board. Was he your immediate pre predecessor? He was. Yeah, so he's left. Well, okay, references count for me then. <laughs> you know, you don't know everybody in life, but you have to ask around. He's one of them. Yeah. Uh huh. Ira Singer. She lived in Middleton all her life. Because there was a town manager in Riviera or the mayor or with Ira Singer at one point. Hmm. Well, I, I certainly have no problem not voting. Yeah, unless, uh, I don't, you know, Mr. Cohen obviously would be my only thought process, but I don't know him at all. So I would okay. defer so we'll to That's fine. Okay. We, we, we did not uh, submit a voting delegate last time. Okay. 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 Next okay. is the uh, approval of the December 3rd, 2014 meeting minutes. I had sent in a few changes to the Colonial Water Company right up. Let's see. Change line set 37. 37. To make it clear that they don't know about any change. Yeah, Not that there isn't a change. That's uh, an excellent point. <coughs> Good. I have no changes. Okay. So I move we approve the minutes of December 3rd as submitted. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you. Um, just a quick update on um, the Springdale property. We'll be a selectman's meeting. We got an update on the Springdale property. So I'm pleased to announce that we now own the property. All the, the purchase was completed uh, yesterday. Yes. Yesterday, January 5th. Excellent. Uh, so um, all, all has been done. Um, I would like to remind everybody, uh, I know it's come up in some of the other committees, that um, we do have a license agreement with Mr. Snyder for his continued um, uh, habitation of the property. Uh, and he will be responsible for maintaining the grounds as well. Um, so even though we own the property, we do not, it is not town property in the sense that it's open to the public. To that point, Carol, um what should be known is that was in the existing agreement that he had with the potential buyer in Northland, and we had to meet all the requirements of Good that point. agreement. Right. That's why there's a, um, a residency right. license in place. Yeah. No, that's a good point. But uh, let's, let's make sure that we don't have residents just walking onto the property thinking yeah, that yeah. now it's, that it's town property, it's, it's for our use, and it's not at this point in time. The uh, uh, Springdale Study Committee, the SSC, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll be meet, having its first meeting next week, next Wednesday evening, and uh, we have eight members plus there will be representatives from liaisons from many of the other boards that were involved in the, in the process. 
So I'm looking forward to getting that job started. Good. That's all I've got. That's all. That's, that's enough for me. <laughs> Robin, anything? Second that. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, everyone. Good night.